For today's session, we have a few learning objectives for you, um, really trying to help us all understand, you know, the local school wellness policy requirements and um, find out what are the different components of the triennial assessment that were also um, required by federal public law to ensure its completion. Uh, we want to um, provide some opportunities to find those connections where we can make the uh, direct alignment and uh, uh, support the integration of the local school wellness policies along with you know, state and other local priorities that you're all working so closely with. Um, and uh, Rathney and Kat have compiled a great list of uh, evidence-based resources to support your work at the local level. So um, with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce our special presenters for today's session. As I shared, Rathney does serve as our nutrition and wellness specialist for LACO. She is a registered dietitian and her passion and expertise lies in school nutrition. Um, she has uh, gained such valuable experience working with numerous districts across the county. And as the nutrition and wellness specialist for LACO, as I mentioned earlier, she does support the implementation of the Thriving Schools Project, um, supporting eight different districts in LA County. Um, and Kat Satterley, she is a 30 year veteran in the field of education, having served as a teacher, district administrator, local wellness policy consultant, and is now the new program specialist in the educational services division at Orange County Department of Education with a sole focus, um, not just the sole focus, but with a uh, with a special focus on staff well-being. She, uh, she was also a university health, um, head athletics coach and a certified life coach. She has passion for supporting others to find health, happiness, and their true potential. So without further ado, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Rathney and Kat. And at this time, I'm going to ask Kat to take it from here. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Mariam, as always, for that generous introduction. And welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you're here with us today to discuss this very important topic of local school wellness policy implementation and communication. And before getting into the implementation and communication pieces, we wanted to give you an overview of what local wellness policy is and what are the required and desired components, the required associated comprehensive assessment called the triennial assessment, and as well to discuss the Thriving Schools Integrated Assessment, which has a district version that ensures that the district is compliant with all federal regulations as well. It has additional policies and practices that support schools. And we'll talk about the school level TSIA or Thriving Schools Integrated Assessment that focuses more on the implementation of those policies and practices and can be used to fulfill many of your requirements. While engaging in your triennial assessment, which happens every three years, you are required to measure implementation and to communicate the results. But I also want to be clear that while you must do these things every three years, it is best practice to measure every year and ensure that any and all updates are communicated to the entire school community, inclusive of the general public. Throughout our presentation, we will reiterate that and share tools and resources that you can use for that. So what is this local school wellness policy? Uh, a local school wellness policy is a written document that guides an LEA or school district's efforts to establish a school environment that promotes students' health, well-being, and ability to learn. And it was initially developed to address the childhood obesity epidemic, but grew to encompass all areas of whole child health. Local wellness policy requirement was initiated by the WIC Reauthorization Act and expanded upon by the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010. And the USDA final rule in 2016 further required minimum content for those local wellness policies. Federal regulations also defined an implementation timeline. And that timeline said that LEAs must comply with the requ requirements of the final rule by June 30th, 2017. And LEAs must complete completely assess their local school wellness policy implementation every three years. The first assessment is that's the triennial assessment. And the first triennial assessment was supposed to be completed by June 30th, 2020. Uh, but this was during COVID, as we well know, and we were given extensions. Districts were able to apply for waivers. So this year we have many districts working on their triennial assessments with the second triennial assessment to be fully completed for all districts by June of 2025. 
So here we have our whole school, whole community, whole child, or what we call the WISC model. And we have three areas here that are depicted with those big blue arrows. These are the areas that are clearly required to be included in your local wellness policy, community involvement, physical activity, and nutrition services. We also have the pink arrows that show where we should create goals for other school-based activities like employee wellness, school services, and of course, social emotional health. Know that nutrition and physical activity requirements for your local wellness policy, again, were born out of the need to address childhood obesity in the early 2000s. And while this is still an epidemic that we face in the US, mental health supports have clearly become a priority. We need to strengthen policy, so we'll talk about what's required and then discuss also what's desired in those policies. And of course, that's based on every school community, um, but I think it's pretty obvious that generally we have some very common needs around that. I also do want to mention that there are other types of policies that exist that relate to child health and specific California mandates that schools are responsible to address or districts are responsible to address, such as uh, Assembly Bill 2246 and 1767. These require suicide prevention policies. So this is something that will often be in a standalone policy, uh, such as, um, and also tobacco policies, right? We have tobacco policies at the district level, and they are health related, and we can include them in our local wellness policy, but these are board policies. Sometimes it's great, we have technology, we can link these policies in. The tobacco policies are, are often very long, as are the suicide prevention policies, and so they're standalone documents. So just know that there are other policies related to health and wellness that might not be um, within your local wellness policy, but be in a standalone policy. And Rathney is going to touch upon a couple of other California state mandates or requirements that should be included in your local wellness policy. And we're not going to go through all of them here because we need a lot more time for that. But be aware that California definitely promotes higher standards for their local wellness policy than many other states. And that's definitely something to be very, very proud of. So what are the USDA local school wellness policy final rule requirements? Um, we will just give a quick summary of those things, starting with nutrition, promotion and education physical activity and other school-based activities. So we know that LEAs are required to include in their local school wellness policy specific goals for these particular things, promotion, education of nutrition, as well as the guidelines that must be adhered to, including foods provided, sold, and marketed. And it establishes guidelines for smart snacks and requires physical activity goals and other school-based activities that promote student wellness. In developing these goals, LEAs must review and consider evidence-based strategies and techniques. And at minimum, the LEA is required to review smarter lunchrooms, movement tools, and strategies. We also have here public notification. LEAs are still required to notify households on an annual basis of the availability of the local school wellness policy and provide information that would enable interested households to obtain additional details. LEAs have the flexibility to determine the most effective method of providing this notification within their own communities. We also have local school wellness policy leadership, right? This is really important as well. LEAs are required to identify the, um, to the public the position or title of the LEA or school official responsible for the local school wellness policy oversight. Um, they recommend that they actually give the name and the phone number of this person, uh, but that is at the discretion of the LEA. That is not a requirement. It is just a recommendation. Moving on here, we see that the final rule requires state agencies to assess compliance with the wellness policy. Uh, again, the triennial assessment as part of this administrative review. And LEAs must conduct this assessment um, every three years at minimum. And we'll dig into the four components of this triennial assessment in just a bit. We look at documentation here. The state agency will examine records during your administrative review. So they'll come in and they're going to want to see copies of the current wellness policy, documentation on how the policy and assessments are made available to the public, the most recent assessment or measurement of implementation of the policy, and documentation of your efforts to review and update the policy, including who was involved in the process and how stakeholders were made aware of their ability to participate. 
I really like this because this really tells us how important it is to not just have one person or two people addressing these requirements, right? These require teams and ensuring that we invite the public in to participate in this process. We also need to provide any updates to the wellness policy. The final rule says that LEAs update, if you update or modify the wellness policy, um, you should do it as soon as possible. It should be immediate. It should be uh, communicated to the public. And for example, um, you know, one of one of those is, you know, we have a recess rule, which is a, a board policy rule, but this can can be included in your local wellness policy. And that's an example of something that for sure we want to make sure that all of the schools are aware of. Everyone in the school should be aware of the new recess rule. So that can also be provided in some of those public updates, which is what we're going to talk about next. And this rule, the rule around public updates requires that LEAs must take uh, must make available to the public, one, the wellness policy, including any updates to and about the wellness policy on an annual basis at minimum, and the triennial assessment, including progress towards meeting the goals of this policy. And again, Rathney is going to get into some of the details of that and all the great ways that we can communicate that information. Okay, so just for the heck of it, I know we said that, you know, some people um, had not been part of this process before. So this is important, right? The idea is that the local education agency is making everyone aware, everyone at the district level, everyone in schools, all of your families, anyone in the general public, this should be communicated in a variety of ways. And again, Rathney is going to really help us to understand how to do that really well. Now we've just talked about our required components, right, for a local wellness policy. And then here's an example of some policy language that can be added under the umbrella of other school-based activities that promote student wellness, right? So as we think back to the WISC model that we showed just a moment ago, this could be social emotional health, could be school health services, etc. But here we're showing language for employee wellness, my favorite topic. <laughs> there are several bullets listed here, as you can see on this slide. And I'm sorry, I know that the, the text is really small, but we just wanted to show you an example of all of the things that you could potentially include in your policy. And this came from Healthier Generations model policy. Um, and what they're recommending, they have a, an orange shout out box there. Is they're essentially saying, if you're going to do anything, make sure that you have healthy meeting standards, right? We're telling students they can only have smart snacks. We're really watching what they eat. We have nutrition guidelines. These things are passed down by the federal government. And, you know, there are lots of movements within schools to have healthier food. And so we're asking the students and the families to only eat and serve and sell healthy foods but maybe staff is having a bunch of donuts and cookies <laughs> and sodas as a snack in their uh, staff meetings. Okay. So definitely a disconnect there. Uh, that's obvious. Um, I know that staff deserves treats sometimes too, but try to make those snacks, smart snacks the next time you have a meeting. Additionally, some of the foundational goals to support staff here, to have a place where staff can relax, right? This is a place they can build relationships. It feels separate from the rest of the school. So think, you know, Zen design, gratitude practices are also very important. Uh, and Healthier Generation has a great turnkey resource for that. And we know that many of the things that we need in education, like sprucing up a staff lounge, is not free. Uh, but there is funding available through your LCAP. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> 